Hello everyone, my name is Raymond, and I'm a PC gamer, and I was super excited to learn that the Master Chief Collection is coming to PC. But many of us are wondering, like myself, is this going to be another Halo 5 Forge scenario, or is it going to be a nice proper PC port of our beloved classics? For those aren't familiar, Halo 5 Guardians was released around 2016 for the Xbox One exclusively. One year after that though, the entire Forge experience of Halo 5 was ported to Windows 10 by the Microsoft Store. And this boasted the inclusion of mouse and keyboard support and the ability to host and play custom matches. It didn't have any campaign or matchmaking features however, but it still seemed pretty good, like it seemed like a good step forward for Halo. But this was far from an optimal experience for PC. Firstly, the frame rate capped at 60 frames a second. There was also no option to change the field of view, you know, which is kind of important for a first person shooter. So that super zoomed in like motion sickness sensation you're looking at, you can't change that. That's, that's, that's it on PC. That's what it is gonna stay at. Also the mouse input was really clunky and I, I still don't really know how it works or anything. It might have something to do with the fact they put mouse acceleration. Luckily though 343 is taking a lot of community feedback for the Master Chief Collection and it looks like it's gonna be a nice proper PC port from what I've been reading about it. But it's not the only AAA title that may suffer from this. I've seen heaps of other AAA games, uh, some that are actually built exclusively for PC, that lack these common features that most PC games should have. For example, Crisis has a huge suite of graphical settings, no option to change the field of view, and you can only bind one key per action. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to illustrate here is that when you're developing a game for PC, I think it's important to put some thought into making the game customizable for all the different types of setups that people might be running. After all, that's the huge selling point for PC is that you know, you can spend either $100 on a potato or $5,000 on a Starship Enterprise. But yeah, it's apparent that some AAA games do lack these settings, but there's also a lot of indie titles as well that lack these too. And I know it's a bit unfair to compare. Us indies are at a huge disadvantage compared to AAAs because we don't have whole dedicated teams just for UI. However, I still believe the inclusion of these settings is important, seeing as the majority of indie games developed are exclusively for PC. And sure, you know, engines like Unity do give you some control over that, but I am personally just sick and tired of seeing this damn pop-up every time I download a game. It kind of spoils the experience for me. I'm not sure if I'm the only one who feels this, but when I download a game from Itch or Game Jolt, and then I'm greeted with that Unity prompt, immediately to me, it's, it's kinda, it kind of ceases to be a game at that point, and it's just a compiled Unity project. And again, maybe I'm the only one who notices, but I kind of appreciate a game where I'm kind of given the opportunity to try and guess what engine it was made in, and then I'm like pleasantly surprised when I learn what it is. Like, let's say I'm playing Inside, for example, and then I learn that it was made in Unity, and I go, wow, I never would have guessed because it looks so damn good. They completely immerse you in the game that you didn't even try and think about what engine it was made in. And that's why I'm proud to announce that you will not have to worry about anything settings wise for the, the rest of the Project Feline development. I've worked vigorously over the past two months in the Unreal Engine to build a full PC settings menu for Project Feline. So without further ado, let's get into it. So here we have the new menu for Project Feline. And as you can see, we have a nice little background image. We got some buttons down the bottom and we can select some different options. I'm gonna go ahead and click play and select one of these levels from the level select screen and just jump into the game. So you can see these settings in action. So here we have the game and in terms of gameplay, again, not much has changed since the last update. It's been mostly backend stuff, getting this UI framework up and working. But now what we can do, you know, we can run around and all that and play it. But we also have the option to pause it and we have this nice little pause menu where we have a few options we can continue we can restart the level which will give us the option to just you know start the level again from scratch we also have the option to exit to the menu and then of course we have the fabled settings menu with all of our gaming needs in one place so as you can see there's quite a few things here to go through so let's let's just break it down one by one and i'll show you what all these do so the first option we have is display mode and this will change whether the game will run in a windowed or borderless windowed or full screen and we can go ahead and change that so i'm just going to show you what windowed mode looks like and click apply and as you can see it shrinks it down into a nice small little window we can also change the display resolution in the option below that so we can set it to you know run in a little square window or a little wider window as well 
Next option we have is brightness, and we can turn this up or down, and this will just simply make the game a little brighter if we're playing in a low lit environment, or make it a little darker, depending on what we want. The next option we have is HDR. Now I'm not able to use this setting because I do not have an HDR supported display, but if you do, you will have the option to enable this option, and this will simply you know, make the game compatible with HDR. I honestly don't know what it looks like, I haven't tried it, so if you have an HDR monitor, send me a screenshot in the Discord. I'd be curious to see how it looks. After that, we have V-Sync. Now this is a very important setting because I think an issue I had with previous versions of this game is that the game's frame rate was actually capped. Basically meant the game wasn't reaching its full potential performance wise. So now we can unleash the game and run it much quicker than it ever used to run. So I can go ahead and disable V-Sync and it'll uncap the frame rate basically and just give us more performance at the cost of, you know, screen tearing and all that. After that option is a frame rate limit mode, and you may think this is the same as V-Sync, and it is not. So V-Sync will sync it to the display's refresh rate, but frame rate limit will just hard set a frame rate to run the game at, regardless of your display. By default, it's set to automatic. And what this means is that it'll try to average it out between 40 to 70 FPS, just to kind of keep it in a reasonable range. The reason it does this is because I don't want people to download the game and then their fans and their computers start going crazy because it's trying to run it at like 200 FPS. So I keep it averaged at that amount, but you can set a custom amount if you want. So I can go ahead and click custom here and I can range, I have an option ranging from 300 frames per second to 30 frames per second. And I'm sure this will come in handy in all sorts of cases. This next one is a huge setting it took a long time to develop but it's the graphics quality the bread and butter of PC games so at the moment I've got it set to high but we have the option to change that preset so I can start running it at low medium high or very high or I can set my own custom preset and change these individually so if I go ahead and click low and click apply uh, you can see the background kind of looks a little different and if I go and into the game you can see it looks like garbage right now but it's gonna run really great for sure. You can see all the real time shadows are gone, it looks a little pixelated, but I'm sure people that have like a Windows Surface or you know, a school laptop, for example, are gonna benefit greatly from this feature. And of course, I have given you the option to enable or disable motion blur, depending on your preference. I included this because I personally don't mind motion blur, but I know a lot of people don't like it. And I kinda wanna give people the option to experience it with or without it, depending on what they want. The next category we have is the audio settings. And this is sort of just, you know, lets you customize the in-game volume and that sort of thing. This is a pretty standard setting in most games. Even console games have this in most cases but I thought to include it as well. Not that there's much audio going on yet, but I'd imagine later in development when I have some more sounds, I'd like to be able to control their volume. The next big category, and this was also one that took forever to do, it's input settings. Cause of course input, it's like one of the big things that kind of separates console games from PC games. Cause we get a nice keyboard and mouse, console guys get controllers, but you can control all of that through this input tab. So we have the horizontal and vertical look sensitivity for the mouse. So you can change the up and down, left and right sensitivity separately. You can also choose to invert the axis if you wish, because I know some people like that. And the same goes for the gamepad as well. It has all the exact same settings. You can change its sensitivity. You can invert it if you want. And then of course, the more complex settings we have here are the custom input bindings. So you can now add your own input bindings to any action in the game, which I'm sure a lot of you would love. So now you can customize you know, any kind of key binding you want. So if you don't like the ones I've set by default, you can change it, you make it whatever you like. It's awesome. So I can change a whole variety of things and I'll show you how that works. So you can see there's these little boxes here and if we go in, let's say we want to rebind jump, I can simply, I think I can press T to clear the binding if I want. And then I can click on the button if I want to bind it and I can input a key and then it bounds it to that action. If however I want to bind, let's say I want to bind spacebar to crouch, but it's already bound to jump, I can simply just do the same thing. I can click on crouch, press spacebar, and it'll actually remove the spacebar from its old binding to the new one. And that actually took a long time. You'd be surprised how long that took to develop, but it works and I'm super happy it does. And of course our final set of options, we have a field of view slider, that's right. So I can go ahead and crank this all the way up and then Check that out, boom, it zooms me right out. I feel like an epic speed run on a PC game in there. Or if I want the console experience, I can turn this all the way down to 70 degrees and play it on my TV and you know, it kind of feels more like a console game now. So that's cool. I know a lot of you have your own, you know, a lot of people like to play 
at super wide angles and all that. And finally, you can change the opacity of the HUD if you wish. I know there isn't much HUD elements on there at the moment, so this may not make too much of a difference, but it's a setting I see very commonly and I thought it'd be cool to add it in. And of course, in any of these categories, if you end up changing something you wish you didn't change, you always have the option to click reset and it'll just clear all the settings and reset them to the default values. And there we have it guys, the full set of PC settings for Project Feline. If there's any settings I missed, feel free to let me know in the comments or in the community discord. I'm open to suggestions. I love to hear what you guys think of it and I'd love to see you guys try it out for yourselves. So all of these new features are available in a new version of the game, which I've linked down in the description. So make sure to try it out. Let me know your thoughts. I'd appreciate it greatly. So if it isn't already apparent, I'm aware it has been quite some time since the last game update. It's been way too long. And I think one of the reasons that might have been is because of the philosophy I chose to go with with developing these systems. It was a bit more complicated than just programming a few widgets. I actually put a lot of thought into how I'd go about constructing the menus and systems you see on the screen. And I'd like to sort of show you a bit of behind the scenes on what that was like, uh, just for you guys. So for those who are previous viewers of the channel, you know I'm a huge fan of making self-contained reusable code because I hate nothing more than developing something and then it not being up to scratch and having to throw it out and replace it later with something else. And I know one thing with this menu in particular, because a huge part of designing menus use is the graphics and at the moment I don't have a huge amount of time to spend on just the graphics but I'd like to later on so I, I had a few challenges I wanted to try and build these settings in a way where I could customize them easily and only have to click a few buttons if I wanted to change how they looked or anything like that and I also wanted to build them in a way where if I wanted to change how one of the settings worked it wouldn't break everything else so understandably this was very challenging but I figured out a way to go about it that I'd like to share with you guys so this is what the menu is, this is the menu widget. But each one of the settings you see inside the widget is another widget itself. So each one of these little things is its own widget that I've programmed. And it makes it really easy because if, let's say I wanted to add another setting to this, I could just type it in, search my user widget, and you can see I have a bunch of settings in here from all across the game. So if I wanted to add in a volume setting to this panel, I could. I could find the sound effects volume and I could just literally drag and drop it into the list. And as you can see, there it is, effects volume. And that's just how easy it is in that sense. But to get it to that point was really difficult. And I know I sound a lot like Todd Howard right now, but it actually does just work. Because of how I've built it, dragging and dropping the setting in, it'll know what to do when it's loaded, applied, saved, anything. Um, it's all self-contained and modular, and I can go ahead and delete the setting as well, and it won't break anything. Now let's look at how I got that to happen. So this here is one of the settings widgets, and as you can see, it looks pretty simple. It's just got a little um, display sort of area with the, the label, with the setting, and then it's got a drop-down menu. Now, of course, each setting is going to be slightly different from the other one, because it's kind of, you know, a V-Sync setting isn't the same as a volume setting, so they all have to work kind of differently, but they all do share some common things. And as you can see in the top corner, this actually derives from a base class that I've written. And this is just a user widget I made, just an empty one with a little, with some events and blueprint interface calls in them. It'll basically allow whatever derives from it to receive load and apply calls which means, you know, a menu can tell it to load and apply, so it'll have, it'll be able to listen for that sort of thing. And it'll also control things like, you know, should we automatically load the setting when we construct this widget? Or should we automatically apply the setting when we've changed it? Because you don't always want that depending on the setting. So this specific V6 setting has been taught how to read a value from a save game object that I've created with all the settings in it. It knows how to read from it and apply that to the little drop down menu. And likewise, it can also read from the drop down menu and apply its value to the save game. And each setting kind of has the same structure, but of course each setting is applying a slightly different setting. And then of course it actually has to tell the engine to apply it. So in VSync's case, it will, you know, apply the right setting, it'll set the variable, but it also actually sets whether VSync will be enabled or not in the engine. And if I wanted to make another setting like this, I could simply just copy this graph out, change this value to, to another setting I might want to do, and then tell it what to do when it's loaded and saved here. 
And I know it seems pretty simple and concise and that's sort of how I wanted it to be. I wanted it to, so that when you looked at it, it would just be easy. Because before this, trust me, it looked like an absolute mess and it took quite a lot of time to get it to this state. But hopefully now that it is at this state, I won't really have to touch the back end again, ever. And if I wanna go ahead and customize things like the fonts or the sprites, I'll be able to do that easily without having to touch the functionality. And there you have it, guys. That is how I built my UI framework and my full PC settings menu using exclusively blueprints in Unreal Engine 4. All of these features are in full effect in the new version of the game which I have linked in the description. Be sure to try it out and let me know your thoughts. If you'd like a setting added or modified or if you have any feedback you'd like to offer feel welcome to leave a comment or join the community discord to help me on my journey to create my dream game. So at this point you may be wondering what's next for Project Feline? Well now that all this stuff's out of the way I'm going to be going back to gameplay and just focusing on tightening the core gameplay loop and making it a super fun experience on that front. And then we'll see where we go from that. Thank you all so much for your patience. I know it's been a long time since the last video and I apologize for that, but I really appreciate the patience you guys have. Shout out to my Patreons who support me through this. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to support the development of this game and these videos, I've got my Patreon link below if you have an extra dollar or so lying around to spare. I try to keep Patreons a little more frequently updated, so you might see a few extra posts from me on the Patreon page or in the Discord. And of course, I'd like to thank the community members producing amazing fan art for my game. I really appreciate the time people take to draw these pieces. Huge shout out to them. If you have a fan art piece you'd like to draw and submit, join the community discord linked in the description. It always puts a smile on my face to see these. And of course, if you want to see more content like this on YouTube, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell. And hopefully you won't miss the next update from me. I'll also be doing a few live streams of the next few things I'll be doing, so be sure to stay tuned for those. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks for following my journey, and I will see you in the next one.